Good morning, everybody, and happy Monday. Hope everybody had a great weekend. I know there's a lot of things going on right now, uh, you know, some crazy riots that are happening, and then horrible, horrible, horrible weather. Uh, if you are up there in Portland or Seattle with the absolute craziness that's happening with the, the, you know, the fog and having the worst air quality due to the fires in Canada, you know what? Find the silver lining. The good thing is, hey, you can be inside and you can work, right? The joys of being a 1099 when bad things happen, we can just put our noses down, work hard, and you know, do those positive things to help impact our paycheck. So I thought we'd start with a good, you know, Thomas Edison quote, where it's really opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. Uh, one of the things we're gonna talk about today is we're actually gonna talk about referrals. And the thing that most people fail on referrals right away is it's work, right? First off, referrals are great. They're free, they're free leads, things you don't have to pay for, but they're not just going to flow into you super easy. You have to put the work in on the front end to earn the referral. So uh, Tom Edison, you know, known for hard work ethic, pretty good way to kick it off. So happy Motivation Monday, everybody. If this is your first Motivation Monday, and I know there's a few new ones of you on the call, here's how it's going to work. We go through a tip of the week right away. We take a look at the trends, so what we are selling right now and what's happening out there. We take a look at who our sales leaders are, and in the end, we're going to end in a sales technique, which this week, as we talked about, is going to be referrals. So to start with tip of the week, we always reviewed last week's. It's about our Medicare learning sessions. We are having pretty good attendance on those. Uh, you know, Medicare is kind of what is going on right now in the industry. Everybody's leaning towards it. Last week we had A and B. This week we have coming up C and D. Really, apparently it goes D then C though. Uh, it's a pretty good learning session 101 for everybody. So you should jump jump in those. We do have a limit though of 101 people. So make sure to sign up before that happens. The webinar of the week after about the Medicare supplements and benefits, that one is filling up ridiculously quick. So if that is something you're interested in, I would highly recommend signing up for that today. If you don't know how to do that, go to the hcpsales.com, go to the training section of that. From the training section, click on the calendar and it's going to give you an area to go and log in and sign up for that. So make sure to do that if that is something you're interested in. So the tip of the week for this week is actually something one of my agents brought up and had a question on. So it is about the carrier back office. I know we're kind of leaning away from that, but it's for uh, the Nat Gen products there. So what it does in the carrier back office, actually, if you go to the customer section, click on the map, that you'll see that there is a place for you to show where your clients are located. So you can actually heat map your clients. Kind of a little fun tool to use, uh, kind of something nice to do. One second here, guys. Okay, you can keep zooming in, you can keep zooming in, so you can see if there's an area where you're actually selling a lot, then you can go and host kind of some of the informational web, uh, informational things that are going on. You can go into a hotel, get people in there, do some of your own personal advertising. This is really important when it comes to uh, taking a look at if you're trying to do your own personal referrals, right? Where are your clients? Where are you actually getting uh, resources from? So kind of a random trick there, but take a look. I only bring this up because NatGen is the carrier that we seem to sell the most of. So hey, you know what? NatGen has given us a free resource. We should run with it. Okay, now to take a look at the trends. So it was a really, really great week. So I just want to start with by saying kudos overall. Taking a look right away with our short-term medical, we are up 36%. Huge, great increase in uh, short-term medical mainly leading with NatGen and Golden Rule, 15% increase in fixed benefit, leading with VBA and the NatGen Foundation Health. But that being said, we did have a slight decrease in accident. Keep in mind, if you are selling those short terms, if you are selling those fixed benefits, add that accident medical expense. You know, it's not that expensive. A baseline AME is about 20 bucks. And you know what you can do? You can kind of start knocking out that uh, max out of pocket, knock out that deductible for your clients with the short term. With a fixed benefit, if they get in an accident, hey, at least they can get a lump sum check for five grand, right? It'll be really good. Uh, well, not really a lump sum check. It's going to pay for any medical bills there. But if their medical bills are over 5000 at least they can get the five grand for that on top of whatever the fixed benefit's going to pay. So keep in mind, accidents, usually it goes up when we do sales increases, kind of an odd one, but hey, we'll just talk about the handoffs there, you know, silver lining, like what we talked about in the beginning, 50% increase there in critical illnesses, as usual, leading with CBL, and then the Nat Gen, we are growing pretty quick with that one. Uh, people seem to like it because it lets you do up to that $100,000 of, you know, for the critical illness, and it does come with that 10-year term life. So pretty good uh, pros on that one. And then we had a really healthy increase in dental. So good increase in short term, good increase in fixed benefit, good increase in sales overall. Just a little fall there as far as it goes with accidents. So 
nothing too shocking, nothing earth shattering, but hey, I just wanted to say good job in those short terms. So taking a look at our sales shout outs this week, let's start with those. So leading the way as usual, Katya, I mean, your, your name is up there. We just kind of got used to it by now. So, you know, I don't have to even change that out lately. It's been pretty nice. So kudos, absolutely kudos. Uh, Patrick Connor, good job taking there in at silver and third would be Robert Swander. So good job, you three leading the way. Uh, killing it in limited benefits or the limited meds, that is where the money is. So for the sales shout outs for short term, we had an overturn this week. I wanted to start by saying, good job, David. You took her down. We finally took Katya down in the short term. You know, she's been up there for almost a month. So you kind of kicked her butt. Kudos. Uh, but Laura's coming after you. You know, she's not even waste, wasting her time here. And then Dustin, welcome to the board. Good job, Dustin, taking in bronze. So good job, you three, in the short term. So we went through what the tip of the weeks are. We took a look at what the sales trends are. And now let's go through, and uh, now we did the shout outs. Take a look at our sales technique, which is going to be tips for building a referral base, right? So one of the things I hear a lot from people is, hey, you know what? I want referrals. I want referrals. I want referrals. I want referrals. Good. We all do. We should. Absolutely. Because you know what? The referrals are free. One of the things, you know, for us going through A, having to pay for our leads, it's always kind of important that we have great referrals, but B, you know, one of the big things is they have a really high close rate, honestly, between 60 and 70% close rate for almost any referral lead that you're actually talking to face to face, right? Um, whenever I get those, I'm always really excited because you know what, I feel like those are guaranteed sales. Um, it also means that you're doing something right, which is kind of important. Referrals should be a steady part of your business. I know one thing when I'm working with my agents that I care about is I want it to be about 10 to 20% of their business, right? Hey, we'd love to have more than 20%. No joke. I'd love to have 100%. I have agents who basically run off of that. But, you know, how do they do it, right? The first tip that we're going to go through, because we're going to go through a few slides here of tips, is going to be very obvious, right? Uh, but I'll tell you that this is one of the things that people actually struggle with. First off, be worthy of the referral, okay? Uh, people jump into this business, they're just selling a ton, a ton of business, and then right away they go, hey, why aren't I getting referrals? Maybe you're selling garbage business. I'm not gonna lie, you know, one of the things that we talked about over and over is we're always gonna do what's right by the client, we're always gonna do what's best for them, and then we're always gonna follow up and make sure things that are going great, right? When we talked about, hey, what's our contact technique? How do we do effective follow-up? If you haven't seen any of those videos, they are in the training section at HCP Sales. But take a look at those. Those are going to talk about, hey, how do I do what's right by the client? That's a very important thing. So first thing, you know, be worthy of it means people want to work with people who are knowledgeable, professional, and fun. I know people hate that word fun. You're like, ah, you know, you can't really be fun. It's insurance. Mm, I'm going to call shenanigans right away, okay? Uh, one of my uh, favorite clients, uh, we had a lot of fun. We always ended our conversations with it's on like Donkey Kong. She actually wound up getting me a stuffed Donkey Kong because she had so much fun. Also, uh, you know, unfortunately, I actually didn't make a lot of money off of her, but the, the good thing was that she sent me all of her friends and family. She gave me about 10 referrals, just total, just by having fun, just by mimicking what her attitude is. You know, we talked about communication skills a few weeks ago. People want to work with people that they like, right? They want to work with people who are knowledgeable, because keep in mind, what is insurance? You are putting your family's trust into somebody's hands when it comes to finances. So you always have to be knowledgeable. You have to be professional, right? Uh, you can't sit there. You can't swear. You can't you know, do all that kind of trashy stuff and fun. By that, it means always give correct information. Big, big, big thing, right? Uh, especially with supplements. You know, We sell a ton of supplements here at HCP. If you give correct information, your clients will care. They will remember it. You know, when they get into that accident and they call you and they're all upset and you're saying, hey, guess what? Good news is you actually have a supplement on here that's going to pay for your accident. That's great. But if you say, hey, you know what? The supplement's going to pay for your accident when it really doesn't. And you said it's going to pay for any accident. And they get into an auto accident. And guess what? Amy's don't pay for that, right? It's already paid for by the auto insurance, most likely. You give them incorrect information, they will tell 10 of their friends. You give them correct information, they will tell one. Right, so referral basis, starting to build that is a slow moving thing, but you have to be honest up front. So always give clients the correct information and that's gonna help you be worthy of the referral. So I like to divide my referrals into three main categories. First is going to be your existing clients. So people you've already sold, they're pleased with your service. Second is clients who you're in the process of or just sold, like literally that moment. 
And third is going to be community networking. So two ways. One is to build a referral basis out of your existing clients. Uh, the other is from external events and items. We're going to start with the internal adding on to your sales process. So the first one seems obvious, right? When you sell them, let them know you will be following up. Now, I usually follow up 14 days after sale, a month into having the plan, and then at termination, if it's a short-term medical, on all those contacts, you can ask for the referrals. Don't be shy. They may have questions. You know, that's one of the things. I've, I've worked with agents that say, hey, why haven't you followed up with this client? Well, they've been emailing me and they have a lot of questions. Yeah, that means you should be following up. Give them good service. Let them go through. And at the end, say, hey, you know what? We, we uh, worked through all these problems with you. We worked through everything that's happening. Let's take a look and see if you know anybody who may also need health insurance, right? So that being said, let them know who you want to work with. So we talked about this before. Who do you want to work with? Think about that. When it be, we were talking about branding, right? So if you specialize in working in the Medicare field, let them know, you know what? I'm actually a Medicare specialist. This is what I uh, specialize in is working with Medicare supplements. So if you have any of your friends, which, hey, if you're talking to somebody who is, you know, in the Medicare age eligibility, they probably have friends who are around the same age group. It can't hurt. Let them know who you want to work with, right? Um, so first off, existing clients, when you sell them, let you know you'll be following up and then actually follow up with them. Uh, keep in mind, I like to follow up the 14 days after sale and then 30 days in, usually 30 days in. Nothing can really go too chaotic at that time. So if you are kind of concerned, hey, guess what? That's a safe area to do. Um, if you want to be one of those people, let them know who you work with. If you specialize in small business, families with younger children, people who have recently moved, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you need that brand. You need to let them know who you want to work with. If you don't have a brand, you're like, hey, you know, I'm the health insurance guy. That's fine. I'll get you maybe like one or two percent referrals. But if you say, hey, you know what? I'm the health insurance guy who specializes in people who have young children. Every time they see somebody who has a young child, you know what? You're actually going to go into their memory, right? Bam, you have a brand. It may not be ridiculously strong, but you know what? It's going to be a brand that you can work with. Next thing is add a hyperlink in your emails. On any follow-up email you send with a line of customers saying, you know, like, hey, I like to work with customers like you, or I like to work with customers who I'm looking for. If you know of anyone who's looking for insurance, give them my contact information or click here to give me their information. Add that little hyperlink. Let them do that. Also, it's important if you are doing that to provide them a template of what you need because I, when I first started doing this probably about 15 years ago, I added that into my email and I said, hey, give me their information. I got a lot of names. I didn't get a lot of phone numbers or addresses. I was, I made a poor life decision. Learn from mine. Learn from my mistakes. That's why you are on here. When you go through, tell them exactly what you need. Say, hey, you know what? I need your name. I need your phone number. Maybe you're going to want an address or a zip code just so you can do that. Who am I going to be talking to? Size of the family. Whatever you want in the hyperlink. I like to keep it kind of quick and to the point. Like, I just want your name and phone number. First name, last name, phone number. So I can go through and do that. Uh, if you are asking your existing clients for people, let them know how you will be handling it, okay? That's very, very important. Uh, that's one of the things that I've learned from other agents is, you know what, you go through, you say, hey, you know what, this is what I'm look, who I wanna work with, this is how they can contact me, and this is what I am going to do. I'm going to reach out to them. If you can reach out to them first before me, that would be ideal. That way they're not gonna get some mysterious phone call. So existing clients, one of the first buckets to work on, you know, that's really important. So another thing, so that's one of them, right? So if we're talking about your existing clients. Bucket one. Bucket two are those that you are in the process of selling or just sold that minute. Here's one for you, okay? Let them know you're going to be asking for them in the beginning. It sounds really stupid, but this is actually an old Zig Ziglar move, right? Uh, so you're going to see saying, hey, first off, let them know right away you're going to be asking for the referrals. Um, one of my favorite things that you know I used to do is, hey, who referred you to me today? Oh, really? Nobody? Well, you know, most of my clients are actually from referrals. That's why I ask. So you're setting up the stage, letting them know about the word referral, that you're going to be asking for it. Uh, also, do very, very small um, value-based statements throughout your whole process. So make them feel like it's normal to give a referral. Well, it seems like when I talk to one person you know, in the city of Coon Rapids, it seems like all their friends and family seem to call me. Something like that. Like, you know, I've actually worked with a lot of plumbers. That's kind of a small world, you know? Usually when I work with one plumber, they just, you know, send all their friends my way. When one calls, he usually gives me every contact and his information, anything like that. So anything that you can make your client feel like it's a normal part of the process. That's what, uh, where most salespeople actually go wrong in their sales process is they wait to the end. You know, first they're holding their breath on the close, and then they're going to hold their breath asking for a referral, 
right? Your client knows the, the closes are coming up. If you follow the sales process that we talked about, they know the closes to be expected, but also let them know that you're gonna be asking for the referrals, right? Again, let them know who you wanna work with, okay? If you say, just give me a name, who knows what you're gonna get? But hey, say, you know what? I am the Medicare specialist. I like to work with people who are specifically with Medicare. So if you know someone who is unhappy with what they have, give them my name, let them know, okay? But don't be afraid to give them boundaries too. That's kind of an important one. Here's a, a really stupid one. Now the best time to actually ask for it, because keep in mind you're asking hints, dropping hints throughout the whole process is immediately after the sale. Why? Because guess what? You close them. They gave you the information. They just, you know, they can finally let out that breath. Like, oh, you know, I've been, I've been holding on my money this whole time. I thought they're going to be selling me. I finally got the product that I want. And it's actually a relief. You know, your, the body actually sends through, uh, you know, chemicals to actually give the client a feeling of relief. So guess what? You can just ask at the end, you know, hey, you know, I went through this process. It seemed like everything was going really good. Who do you know that also needs health insurance? So keep in mind, asking for a referral it is not begging, but it's educating the customer of who you are, what you do, and what you are looking for. So do it throughout the whole whole process. You can also do the old line of don't keep me a secret. You know, hey, you know what? Referrals are actually a large part of my business. Don't keep me a secret. You know, if you have any issues or if you have any friends or family who need help, just send them, give them my name and number. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, if you've ever worked with a realtor, realtors, it's huge. You know, they can't go through like what we do for the most part. It's harder to get leads as a realtor. They use the don't keep me a secret. You know, so if you've ever worked with one, you've probably seen it before. If you've ever worked with any type of salesperson, steal what they do. Don't be afraid. So add small add-ins to your sales process right in the beginning when you're talking to them being like, hey, you know what? I work with a lot of people who are just like you throughout the whole process. You know, just let them know like you work with people, you work with referrals throughout the whole thing. And at the end, you already sold them. You're going through telling them what the next steps in the process are. Then ask. Most people screw up by not asking. It sounds really stupid. Do it. Do it for me. On your next 10 sales, ask for a referral. Just ask for the referral and see what happens. Maybe it's going to make you uncomfortable. That's kind of the goal, right? You have to be uncomfortable to do something new. And now here's the one that everybody wants to talk about is the externals. And these, I think, make most people uncomfortable. Uh, but again, like Thomas Edison said, some people are afraid to work or afraid of work because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. So here's a few things. Find referral partners in the same industries, okay? I come from a family of small business owners. That is one of the biggest things that they did is they always found a referral partner in a similar industry. So guess what? You specialize in accident health, right? Find a property and casualty. Find an attorney. Find anybody who works with people. Who is your accountant? That is a huge one, right? Okay, so talking about that, if you're talking with the accountant, if they're going through and they're doing people's taxes and they're finding out that people owe money, due to what's going on with the health insurance world, even though, yes, that's going away, but guess what? It's still in line on the tax item. Say, hey, you know, here's a stack of my cards. Give them to your clients. Go in and talk to these people saying, hey, you know, if I have people with tax questions, is it okay if I have them go to you? Then you can use them as your clients. And then if you have people with health insurance questions, send them to me. Same with property and casualty. Do that. Even though, yes, a lot of people are, you know, life, health, accident, property, and casualty. I get that. But what do you specialize in? Again, what is your brand? Start finding people who work in similar industries and use it. But make sure here's a big thing, right? You can't walk in and say, hey, you know what? I want all your business. Give me business. Give me business. Sell it to them. What can you do to them and why should they help you? That is what's an important one. Here's an interesting one. Host a seminar. So I see signs all the time for financial or life insurance seminars in like local community buildings, apartment buildings. There's actually one in a hotel that I'm in today for hair care products randomly, um, hosting seminars. Find a room where you can actually host a seminar, go through and advertise it. Talk to the apartment buildings beforehand, put up flyers into that. Uh, you know, Go to like local coffee shops. If you're in the uh, great state of Minnesota, go to your local Caribou. If you're in other states, go to your local Starbucks, whatever, whatever floats your boat there. But it should be really inexpensive. A plate of cookies, a case of water, milk if you're really nice. And then you can check to see you know, with local community organizations, you know, say, hey, you know what? I'm actually going to host a seminar here on insurance and insurance options due to everything that's happening. Why should you host seminars? What's happening right now in the world? We have a different leader who is going to be changing the health insurance market. Everybody's confused. Host seminars. That is a free place to get referrals. Network in local small business groups as well. Uh, be careful, though. A lot of small uh, business groups are just a place for people to go to run away from their spouses to get drunk. But hey, if you're there, just go through and work with 
you know, the people who are there. Say, hey, you know what? This is what I do. What do you do? Let's start building the referral basis. Keep that in mind. Again, if there are small business owners that you like to work with, be like, hey, you know what? I bet you have a lot of friends who do the same thing. Here's a group of my cards. You know, we can go through. We can try to create connections that way. It's a really good idea. Attend, sign up for local networking groups. Also, add a referral link on your website. Everybody should have this if you don't. And again, email signature. Guys, this is so easy. You know, if I'm going through and I've worked with somebody and I want to refer somebody, sometimes I can go through and I can just copy and paste their information. Or if they say, hey, if you have a friend who's interested, click this button. A lot of times I do. It's easy that way. Uh, but I let my friends know. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm just giving your information to somebody who's looking for it. External ways are really important. You know, start taking a look at those out there. You know, I say, let everybody know what you do. Go get a shirt with your uh, own insurance logo tattoo, or uh, not tattooed, whew, embroidered on that one. And, you know, wear it around. Be, do what you do with pride. Let people know what you do. Put the decal on your car. Small things like that are going to be things that people overthink, right? You're going to say, hey, you know what? I never buy anything off of a car. Well, guess what? You own a small business and a lot of small business owners do, right? They know they want to work with small business. We work in our field with, you know, people who have one, two, or 50, you know, not crazy numbers. We want to be that professional. We want to grow our business, and that's a good way to do it. So steps to take now. First off, be worthy of the referral. Make sure all the information that you are giving out is going to be accurate and up-to-date. Add a referral link to your signature. Let your sales today know that you will follow up. Do that for me. The next 10 sales, let them know, hey, guess what? I'm going to follow up for you. And on that call, if you have any friends or family who, you know, need insurance, let them know. Uh, create a list of people or communities that you know and want to get in front of. Uh, by people, I mean business owners, right? So, hey, go through, find out who all your local small small attorneys are, you know, because if they're going to deal with people who just get out of incarceration, for example, those people need insurance. They're going to have a qualifying life event. So, hey, guess what? They can be looking at major med, but you can also lead them to short-term or limited med options. You know, go through your local accountants if those are going to be people who have those issues with that. Um, also, this one is overlooked quite a bit, but uh, hairstylists. I'm not going to lie. They get there, they talk to people, and people sit in that chair and they complain. They just sit there and complain and complain and complain, which is perfect, right? So if they sit there and they're complaining about how expensive insurance is, guess what? That hairstylist might have your card and give it to them as a referral. It is a small little gold egg that a lot of people don't use. And keep in mind, create that list of referrals, partners, and a system to connect. So take a look in your local community organizations, what's going on. Your local chamber of commerce. Take a look at what's going on in your community and things that you can join. So those are a few quick tips for you. If you do have any questions or want to run any ideas by me, feel free to email me at training at hcpsales.com. That does go directly to me here. And I thought I would end with a nice quote for you guys. Let's see if we can get it pulled up. There's no substitute for hard work. Hey, that is in round two, right? So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out. If not, you know, let's put our nose down. Let's work really hard. And I look forward to seeing you all next Monday.